after all the hard work I've been doing to the GQ over the last few months, modifying it, heaps of cool things going on it, today we're finally taking it out the bush for its first test drive. Proudly supported by Tread, Superior Engineering, and in part by. So I got all the suspension done, GU diffs, wheels, tyres, lockers, bar work. Still got more to go, winch, turbo, a few bits and pieces like that. But I wanted to take it for a good test run because we're about six weeks out from Christmas and then after Christmas we're going to Tassie. So I figured we'd head out some local tracks going with Pat in his GQ, who's my mechanic, and another guy, Chaz, in his GQ, so it's three GQ gang. And yeah, a few of the boys, Nick's coming too as well, who's been doing a lot of work to this car, so it'd be good to have them there, test it all out, make sure everything works, see uh, where the 35 smash and scrub on things, make sure all the lockers are working, suspension, that way it gives us time to fix anything we need to uh, yeah, coming up to Christmas. So super excited because it'll be the first time driving this car on some tough tracks, a little bit nervous. First one we're doing is uh, something hill. Starts with a C, four letter word. Uh, you can use your imagination to work out the rest, but yeah, it's fairly interesting hill, very steep, loose and rocky. So that's where we're kicking off today. Just throw it straight in the deep end to test it out. That's Chaz up first. Not too bad, it's just loose, so it sort of kicks and bounces him around a bit, but yeah, got up there, that's up next. Just on dirt so you can just plow through it. Same step that caught Chaz out at the top there. Bit of a rear diff smasher. Woo! Here, 
don't talk to us, all right? We need to get some premium NATD screaming. See you in, in a day. How much storage you got on this thing? All righty, we'll see how I go. First ever proper hill climb, really, in this GQ, so. Yeah, it's interesting. Driving a new car, a bit nervous, a bit excited. No idea how it's gonna go. I'm already, like, enjoying being back in a manual diesel over a auto petrol. I find it much easier to control and... Jeez. Drive smoothly out the bush and I've already uh, scratching up the new paint pretty good. Swap on mine, eh? That's way better. <laughs> behind the scenes, bro. Behind the scenes. Jeez. <laughs> this thing clunks and bangs around a bit. Bloody 30 year old tractor. <laughs> I just did it. Oh, jeez, Louise. I need a holiday after that. <laughs> you got it, Rex Bro. That's a long way. Come come take this. Oh, you're lucky I haven't had a heart attack walk up there. <laughs> <sighs> Mate, you gotta be fit to be walking up these hills. I don't know. Big state, Left line, I guess. I've just worked out this seatbelt's really bad on this car. Like, normally it's only the on steep stuff that I lock. This just seems to lock on any sort of angle at all and it locks on you. I'm first up for the big bago steps. <clears throat> Did that easy. Second section, I'm not even gonna film it, I guess. Ripping off all the flares, perfect. <laughs> yeah, first time out in a GQ is also flare delete, it seems. I didn't cut them up good enough, so tearing them all up. But yeah, that did that easy. I'm already beginning to think this car is more capable than the GU. It's got to be. Especially being light as it is with like not really anything on it, it just makes them so much better. Never actually done this track before, so this is Big Mouse Trap, isn't it? Yeah. So come through that little creek down the bottom, and then you've got a big climb up out of the valley. But yeah, local track and never been here. It's definitely steep. A few rocks. Nothing extreme, but I don't think it's anything. It's not a showstopper. To be worrying about.
Ahí lo que hay, tío. Ahí. The shackers, man. <laughs> oh, oh! <laughs> I nearly lost it, eh? I've nearly gone over so many times today. That was on record, too, eh? <laughs> Right in the camera frame, you're dead, eh? That's made the, that's made the bloopers. 100% made the bloopers. That's how you know it's steep when everyone keeps falling over on the hill. Yeah, literally. <laughs> cool. He'll drive through it. That's, yeah. Tell him he's got to do like one smooth motion through it. Jazz is having brake problems, he tore a um, rear brake line out down the bottom there so it kind of patched it up but he has lost brakes a little bit which is not ideal so that's why he's a bit nervous and that's why he's stalling it out. What do you reckon? Well he'll, he'll drive what, like one smooth motion, like as smooth as you can be on the throttle forward you'll be fine. On that tiny bit uh, left hand down, tiny bit that way. Turn the wheel that way? Yeah a little bit. Yeah, and then like one smooth motion, like when he's stopping on that rock, that's what kicks the front up. So if you, if you, you'll barely lift the front wheel if you like just go through it. be the last track of the day little flex track it's fairly wet though so it's a bit slushy and sloppy in here a few flexy sections
Alrighty, back home now, giving the car a good bath and wash since first time I got it dirty and we still got a few more mods to go between now and Christmas so I wanted to make sure it was nice and clean. But yeah, that was an awesome day out. Car went really well. Just gonna have to do some mucking around with the guards a bit because it did smash them up a little bit. One thing I did notice, those new coils, they weren't clanging banging today which I was stoked about. Lockers worked. Um, and yeah, it honestly blew me away how capable this car was. Much more capable than the GU in its current state, I reckon. I love going back to a manual diesel out the bush over a auto petrol, because that was what I did a lot of four-wheel driving in in my early days, a manual diesel. And I don't know, a lot of people say oh, auto is better out the bush, but manual is more fun. I would just say, in general, a manual is better out the bush. Uh, I just really like the way they work. Other than really slow technical rock crawling, probably an auto is better there than working the clutch, but a lot of those hill climbs and things we did today, yeah, I was, I was loving it. And so much more stable than the GU. The GU is quite heavy down the back with the rear bar, like a bigger car, that long range tank. It wants to pick wheels and pivot on everything. And I think it's lighter up the front. Big diesel up the front, they're a heavier engine. Like this car's still very light in its current form, so super light and with the narrow body, the big wide GU diffs and Neg 38 wheels, super wide. Yeah, it was just so stable, like the other boys were picking up wheels and this thing wasn't. It just seemed to crawl its way through everything, it blew me away. So I'm super stoked with what we've done to it so far, how I've modified and how it's come out. And other than that, I think everything seemed to be working. We should be good coming up to Christmas. As I said, we still got more mods to go, but... You can you can to have a test drive in the GQ? Yeah, after we destroy it. Yeah. How do you reckon you'll go by out the bush with a manual? Better drive than you are. <laughs> got a first few scratches on the paint, on the fresh Predator, but... <laughs> It held up much better than normal paint, like Pat's car didn't look too good after some of the land, land time we went through today. It's got a few marks, but that would sort of rub out anyway. Not that it really matters. Gonna get scratched to pieces over the next couple of years. I'll see how long this video is. I may do a little Q&A now or something. I'll put it out on social medias and stuff, see if anyone has any questions of the build so far and that, because I feel like the video will probably only be 15 minutes so far. I just finished editing the driving part of the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Back a few weeks later, I've realized I do have a little bit more time, so I put out a Q&A on social media. I've got a few questions I can run through about the GQ build and uh, how I'm finding it so far. I've also realized that this video is gonna come out Christmas day. I'm gonna put it out, so Merry Christmas everyone. Hope everyone's having a good day and an awesome year. And just say a little thank you to everyone for their support for the year. I'm gonna do a sale on the website if you're after any merchandise, Boxing Day sales, that type of thing. So the code will be end of year 15, give you 15% off and we'll run it through to 31st of December midnight. So through to the end of the year. So if you want anything, shirts, hoodies, hats, stickers, all that sort of stuff, it's all on there. First question, since the engine has a lot of kilometers on it, what do you think you will do when with it when it goes? So this is something I sort of debated about a bit. It's a 700, nearly a 700,000 kilometer car and we are turboing it soon. Well, we have turbo, turboed it. You guys haven't seen it yet, but that is coming up. Ideally, probably should have done an engine rebuild before I did turbo it, but we just didn't really have time to get it done to get this thing ready for the big upcoming Tassie trip. The plan was to do sort of a mild turbo, not like send it to space with the turbo. And then hopefully it'll get me through sort of 12 months or so. Yeah, potentially do an engine rebuild down the track, like sort of fre build a fresh TD42, I guess, spend, spend a bit of money on it. That's sort of one of the last jobs. Just hopefully I get through to that point. Is the driving comfort really different world compared to the GU? It's GU is definitely much more comfortable like for longer drives on the road. The, G the GU is quite comfortable in the cab. The no road noise isn't too bad. You know, you can sort of sit in there, have a conversation, listen to your music, all those sorts of things, not be a drama. In the GQ, it's definitely more tractory. <laughs> like, 
they're no, they're just they're much noisier in the cab i guess is the main thing like they're they're an older vehicle they're not as luxury and comfortable on the road but i will say driving at na was pretty painful at how slow it was and stuff like that but once we turboed it which you will see much better much better drive on the road like much more responsive much more power sort of drive around comfortably you just don't have that in cab quietness and it's a little bit rougher just older vehicle when do you think you will chop it we were originally going to chop it in the earlier phases quite early on there was like oh it's a huge job I means it's going to take longer to get it ready for trips and why not enjoy it as a wagon for a little while first so that's why i've built up as a wagon but now that it's a built wagon <laughs> i'm kind of really like it <laughs> i'm not that keen to chop it I'll see, I'll see what happens. I do think it'll look pretty cool as a wagon. Just probably depends uh, where and how rust becomes an issue in this thing one day. And also if I damage up the back too much. They're probably going to be the deciding factors. Will you make it a comp truck eventually? No current plans for that, but I'm not going to say it's impossible. Could happen, but yeah, no, no current plans or interest in doing that sort of stuff at this point in time. How much boost do you plan to run in the GQ? So when we turbo it, well, we have turbo when you see it. The plan with the turbo was always to sort of keep it under 20. So about maybe around the 20 PSI boost mark, 18 to 20, and then go for, I think like that 180 horsepower. That's sort of, you know, not low, but definitely not high either, just a medium range. If you chop the GQ, are you going to make it a space cab or a four door? Don't know yet. Leaning more towards a space cab if I do, just cause dual cab chop, you don't really have much room down the back. Uh, like it's gotta be a pretty short tray and that's not that practical. Otherwise your chassis extend, extend it. I don't wanna get into that. Are you ever going to engine swap it? Uh, it's not impossible, but I feel like, as I was talking about four engines in the future, I feel like I would just rebuild this one or even get like a crate motor TD42. Then once put a crate motor in, this car's pretty much rebuilt and <laughs> ready forever. But cause like we're turboing it, setting everything up to run on a TD42 and they're just, I wouldn't say they're the best motor. I did make a joke recently on Instagram, which upset a few people. I said TD42 is better than FTE, but I was just playing around that. Don't actually think they're better than an FTE. But I don't know that much about engines, but yeah, just the TD42s, I do know they are very bush proof. So they're quite easy to fix track side, which means you can send this thing down thousand dollar track and all that sorts of stuff and be able to repair it out there compared to a complicated motor. So that's why I kind of want to stick with the simple TD42 forklift tractor kettle life. Is the GQ exactly what you wanted? Areas where the budget constrain the project. I'm gonna have to take it off-road more use, like more off-road more use, more off-road use on a few trips and stuff like that. But pretty stoked of it so far especially yeah once we turbo it how it drives very capable out the bush like just a and i think they're a pretty cool car or, or like i like the look of them once they're done up areas where the budget constrained the project that was probably just a, like an engine rebuild or new engine or something and that would have been the ideal thing to do a few various questions here about lift kits what front springs did you go details on lift kit size coils shocks so it's a superior Hyperflex lift kit, which means Hyperflex radius arms in the front, which are your off-road suited ones, so they allow plenty of travel. All upgraded arms through the rest of it, lowers, uppers, Superflex sway bars, tie rod, drag link, all your arms. Then it's got the superior 2.0 remote res shocks, and then it's got Dobinson flexi coils in it. Uh, so I, th I think maybe a four in the front and three in the back or even five in the front and four in the back but they sit down about three inch once you get all the way on them so that was the plan just to get that allow that travel for them to work with the length of the shock so yeah car's pretty much set up three inch lift 35s should shad build a gq he told me he wants to shad definitely should build a gq he's been telling me he wants to get one as well he told me that he prefers patrols over land cruisers what bar and side rails do you have? All the bar work was built by on the side fab, custom yeah, bar work through it. Dan asked, when are you going to <laughs> TB swap it? Look, I've already got the TB48, so I think I better stick with TD Life for this one. And then, yeah, I don't know. Think of a different engine in the future. Got to keep trying different, got to keep trying different things and work out which ones I hate and which ones I like. 
see how diesel life goes for me goes for me for a little while all right i think i'll end it there so i don't go on for too long and bore everyone but thank you everyone for the questions hopefully you enjoy the video enjoy your christmas end of the year holiday period whatever's going on we're going to be away in tassie in january i can't guarantee there'll still be a video out every week but i'll I'll try my best. I've still got a few more lined up. Yeah, I'll save everyone in the next episode. What? Oh, that shows. Oh. Thanks, mate. Right? Angles. Yeah. After all the hard work we've been doing to the GQ, after. Sorry, there's so much noise going on, there's birds going crazy and there's people mowing over there, people grinding over there, so I just gotta get this done, so hopefully you can still hear me, alright.